Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Black Knights Weekly. I'm Nick DeSanctis. Today we'll head down to Tate Rank for night school, meet a freshman on the women's basketball team having quite the start to her career, and talk to the new director of football operations. We'll start today with our cadet spotlight. For the second straight year, an Army women's basketball plea put up a double-double in her first game. The Black Knights are 3-1 and one this season and have Danielle Failer coming off the bench to provide some much-needed support. She is this week's cadet spotlight. Well, in the beginning it was kind of tough with being homesick and being overwhelmed with schoolwork. But as the days go on, you get used to how things work around here and then you start to settle in and now that basketball season's here, I feel like much better about what's going on. Honestly, even though I played high school basketball at a high level, the pace is so much faster in college. And that first game, first few minutes I was super winded, but you get used to it and the pace, the pace is way different. So, Coach McGarity, I don't know how to describe it. Like, I don't know. I really don't. He's an awesome coach. Like He knows what you need to do to get better. He tells you how to do it, and you do it, and it works. I really love how connected we are as a team, so that's made my time here a lot better than what it most likely would have been without being an athlete. Danny Failer, please go Army Women's Basketball. It's time to head over to Tate Rink as class is in session. Face-offs are a huge part of the game of hockey, giving your team the chance to maintain or gain back possession off of a stoppage of play. Clint Carlisle shows us how to take a face-off in this week's night school. I'm uh, Clint Carlisle, Army hockey team, freshman forward, and uh, this is how you take a face-off. Both centers are going to be with their feet at the red, stick in the white, wait for the ref. The ref's going to drop the puck about yay high, and uh, you're just going to try to beat the other guy with speed, or try to you know knock the stick out, bring the puck back to your defenseman. What I like to do is come in, wait for the ref to drop the puck, knock his stick away, and bring the puck back to my defenseman. What I like to do is uh, turn my hand over, and uh, get just a little more power, get your knees bent, get real low, watch the, watch the ref's hand, and then just as soon as he drops, come in, sweep under. Um, anything behind you, the wingers will come in, try to support the puck, but uh, if you can get a clean win to the defenseman, then uh, that's ideal. There's two main strategies. One is either you can beat them with quickness and just watch it and just come in real fast and get the puck out, or two, what uh, Dane Heller likes to do is come in, use your body, put your body against him, put the puck, pass the puck back to your defenseman. Draws, face-offs are really important, so uh, center cheap. If they uh, step up too far or slap the stick before the ref drops the puck, then uh, they can get tossed out, and uh, one of their wingers has to take the face-off. I'm Clint Carlisle, and that's how you take a face-off. It's time now for this week's Army One-on-One. -on -one. There's a new director of football operations here at West Point, Lieutenant Colonel Chad Davis, a 1994 West Point graduate, is taking over the reins. We had the chance to sit down and talk to Colonel Davis about his time here at West Point and how his career has come full circle. My uncle was stationed here at Stewart Army Subpost back then, and uh, he and my father, we were living in New Jersey at the time. I was finished my last two years of high school in New Jersey. So we came up to visit, and they took us on a tour of West Point. Uh, during that time, I met Mike Mayweather, a uh, very prominent Army running back. I uh, walked around a little bit with him and a few other cadets and uh, got to know the place, found out a little bit about what it was about, and decided this was a good place for me. My biggest game would have been my first start against Louisville. Uh, I was a sophomore, and uh, it was down in Louisville. It was a great day, and uh, I had a, a really good game. I had two touchdowns, over 100 yards rushing, two good kickoff returns. And, and uh, my first start, my introduction really to, to Division I football. Navy as a cadet uh, on the team, 3-1. and one. Um, Nail biters <laughs> for the most part, but, yeah, 3-1, and one, still emerged victorious. Well, after, uh, I mean, while I was here, I branched Signal uh, Communications, 
And from there, actually, I was a, a grad assistant coach at a prep school when I first graduated. Then I went to the leader course down at Fort Gordon. And I stayed at Fort Gordon for my platoon leader time and eventually took command of a company down there. Coming back to West Point, there was an opportunity when I came up for one of my reunions, and I met uh, now retired Lieutenant Colonel Mike McElrath, who was in the athletic department. He was the operations officer. And uh, he said there was an opportunity for me to come back to West Point. And I thought, well, it'd be a great way to bring my career full circle. And the opportunity to work in athletics, you know, something that had given me so much as a cadet, to be able to give back a little bit and support the teams, all of them, especially the ones that supported me, I couldn't turn it down. It was, it was a dream, actually, a dream answer. Your first love is, is always going to be what, what keeps you, you know, thrive and, and going strong. And football, definitely a passion of mine. And obviously I get to work with some of the best young men on the planet uh, as a, you know, evidence of what this team is um, and what they've committed to do. And, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't ask for anything better than, than working with the football team. The focus has never shifted. It's always been about producing leaders of character. Um, the resources have increased. It looks like it looks like they have more opportunities uh, to thrive in leadership positions. It looks like they have more opportunities to excel at various challenges. Um, the training is definitely more real world, um, more applicable. Uh, back then, you know, we were preparing to fight, you know, Cold War type war. Now, the nature of of fighting has changed. And what I see is a focus on developing leaders who will be able to thrive in that environment. Uh, as far as athletics are concerned, the facilities are, are head and shoulders above what we had here as cadets, and that's, that's great. It looks like uh, alumni are supporting, people are donating to make sure that our cadets get to realize their full potential, both athletically uh, and militarily. Last of the day, we hand the microphone off to the hockey team for 15 seconds with Army Athletics. Hello, Black Knight fans. I'm Josh Richards. I'm Joe Kozlak. And I'm Willie Faust. Come support the Army hockey team as we take on Sacred Heart this Friday night at 7 p.m. at Tate Rink. Go Army! Thanks so much for joining us on this week's edition of Black Knights Weekly. Remember to like the Black Knights on Facebook, follow Army Athletics and all of our teams on Twitter, as well as Night Vision on Twitter now at Army Multimedia for updates on all the latest video on the Black Knights. Until next time, for Night Vision, I'm Nick DeSanctis. Go Army.